Hello, I'm Pam Carruthers of HealingStars.com. This is the chart for the full moon, 30th of April. It's almost two o'clock in the morning in London, UK. I'm using whole signs for the houses, which is where the activities take place. So here's the moon up here in Scorpio. First of all, the good news. Notice that the moon, nine degrees Scorpio, is moving towards Jupiter, also in Scorpio at the moment, for the, until yeah, two thirds. It's, it's, it takes a year to go through a sign. Opposite is the sun in Taurus. Taurus and Scorpio are fixed signs, and fixed signs give stability, but can also reputation is for stubbornness, which is very much the negative aspect of Taurus, possessiveness, holding on. They are creating a square, a T-square, it's called in the astrology, to the nodes of the moon. That's a very karmic configuration. And the north node is at the moment in Leo, the sign of royalty. Now, it's a complicated full moon. It's got Pluto and Mars close together. And they actually came together on the depending on where you are in the world. Of course, it varies the time zones, but April 26th is the date of that exact conjunction. So Mars has just moved past. Mars is exalted in Capricorn, and Saturn is also sitting there in Capricorn. Pluto's been there for a long time. It's a, it's a long, long journey. But this can bring up to the forefront. Pluto is all about the unconscious. So what's buried? And what's buried, if you know, you know your mythology of it, is treasure, isn't it? The, the dragon sits on the buried treasure. So this full moon is asking us, because it's Scorpio, Pluto and Mars are both the, what they call the ruling planets of Scorpio. So it's intensity here, but also a great opportunity for healing. Anything that may have been buried, especially if you have planets, close to this, this this actual chart. So close to obviously nine degrees Scorpio, nine Taurus, what's that 21, 22 degrees in Capricorn. One thing that has just occurred, Chiron has just changed sign. Now this is a brief entry into Aries. It will go retrograde later in the year and then it will go back into Pisces and then finally move into Aries full time. So we're getting a taste at the moment of what that can be. Mercury is there, it's moving forward, hooray. However, it's still in what we call the shadow period. Unfinished business you might have been dealing with over the last week or two. Uranus, another planet in Aries, is just at the end of Aries. So this is exciting, there's Chiron at the beginning and Uranus at the end. And both these energies are to do with awakening. They do act in a very specific way. You can time things to the day with Chiron and, and Uranus both. So Uranus will be changing sign. It will go into the next sign of Taurus. That's not until the May the 15th. Okay, and that's an important date. Just like Chiron, it will spend a short period of time in Taurus, retrograde, go back to Aries, and then finally back into Taurus. So we're getting a, a, an absolute taste of this energy in, in the next month. Venus has changed sign. <laughs> Venus now is in Gemini. And Venus in Gemini is quite flirty. It's fun-loving, it's light-hearted, and it's the goddess, of course. So in Gemini, Venus is in Mercury's sign. And this is why it's quite flirty and, 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 and playful and playing charades and things like that. Queen Mother had this, apparently, Venus in Gemini, and that's what she loved to do. Take a leaf out of her book, have a bit of fun. Mercury, notice what Mercury's now doing. It's trining that North Node. So there's messages, definitely messages, that are to do with what we call karmic patterns. You might like to buy my Karmic Insights report I sell. It's a very good and very succinct report and it's very, very popular with people. They really like it. 
It's on my website, healingscars.com. The other thing to look at is Neptune. Neptune in Pisces is making a very good relationship to Jupiter. And this is all about forgiveness, compassion. Neptune is very sensitive wherever it is in your chart, especially in the first house if you happen to have it there. And this is known as the Wesak or the, the Buddha full moon. And of course, you know, the Buddha's commitment to healing and blessing and I'm just trying to think, no, I'm letting go of attachments. I'm not a Buddhist, but these are things that stay in my mind about Buddha. And I love looking at the Buddha as such. Capricorn, I've just mentioned briefly, but Saturn it is Saturn. It is now retrograde. So it does that every year. Saturn will go retrograde. And it is making an incredibly good relationship aspect, it's called. That blue, all the blue lines are positive. Blue line to the sun, exact same degree. Now what that's saying with the Capricorn energy in Taurus, these are earth signs. Earth signs are good at manifesting. They're good at bringing things into the, what inverted commas, real world. That we can touch and we can smell, we can see, you know, all the senses. So it's a very sensory full moon as well. And also goals. You know, we need, when we have goals, we set intentions for something. We need to plan and we need to do the work. It's not just going to happen. So this is a very important time to do that, to revise what your New Year's resolutions may have been. It's a good time to do that now, because you do have this strong Capricorn energy with the sun in its wonderful sign to do with the Earth, the Earth Mother, the goddess Gaia in Taurus. One thing, be aware of that buried treasure Emotions, emotions can be intense, dramas can occur, things can come up that need releasing. I was once told that Pluto transit in your chart is as if for suddenly one day a tenant bursts you know, from, your, from your floor, bursts out of your floor from the basement and you never knew you had a basement, let alone you had a tenant in the basement. So it's a time very much of that intense energy of release and deep, deep healing. I wish you all the best at this full moon. Thank you for watching. Pam at healingstars.com.